I gotta say, from all of the years of reviewing research and being a practitioner myself, this one thing has become very, very clear. Strategic meal timing does things, cellular things. Now, what exact cellular things and the extent to which they happen depends on an individual's unique set of variables and current health status. I mean, come on. You know there aren't any simple and straightforward answers in the health and longevity game. But since you're here, here's why I partake and why I'm on the early train. Yo, yo, yo! What is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we are going to dive into a little bit of everything around early eating or strategically timing one's meals to be earlier in the day rather than focused around the big dinner centric model that everyone in the Western world has been pre-programmed to follow. And as you mind wander to contemplate if this pre-programming does in fact exist, the simple fact that you have to think about it so deeply displays how strong this social software really is. Now, futuristic Elon Musk Neuralink jokes aside, it's been no surprise that our modern day eating habits are totally out of whack. Is butter a carb? And very suspiciously, so is our health, particularly with the uptick of modern day disease. Disease that doesn't kill us on the spot, but slowly deteriorates our health away, secretly stealing those years of truly being able to enjoy life. AKA our healthy years or health span. Right. Which as you know, is a critical component to the longevity equation. So let's talk about why meal timing has power. Some new research adding even more evidence to its efficacy in promoting longevity and finish with my own personal experience from eating early and why I've been doing it for the last five years with no intentions of going back. But before we get going, I'd like to take a quick moment of silence for dinner. Oh, and the notorious midnight snack. Yeah. They had a good run. First, why meal timing has power. And the underlying reasons for this may be a little surprising. If you didn't know, our body follows a natural biological rhythm, which regulates its function across a 24 hour day. This is called our circadian rhythm a phenomena that has evolved with us humans and our ancestors over the course of millions of years. And it is governed by a master clock in our brain or a cluster of about 20,000 neurons called the suprachiasmatic nuclei. And we have a full breakdown on this super cool system in this video here. Essentially, this area of the brain interprets cues from the environment like sunlight and darkness and alters our biological operations accordingly, upregulating and downregulating specific processes that help us be optimized for that particular time of the day. Now, what was more recently discovered is that different organ systems throughout the body also have a figurative timekeeping ability. This is called our peripheral clock. These peripheral systems, such as the digestive system, have the ability to act on their own in accordance to cues that they are specifically sensitive to. Here's where things get interesting. Research suggests that energy containing beverages and foods have the power to turn on the respective biological clocks of these organ systems. Think the liver, stomach, intestines, and pancreas. And it can do it ad hoc or upon consumption, no matter what time of day it is. Now, you may be thinking, well, isn't that supposed to happen? Yes, but there's a caveat. Our modern 24 seven eating habits in combination with the high consumption of less than optimal ultra processed foods are stressing out these systems in ways that have never been seen before, creating the reality where digestive rest is the outlier rather than the norm. And this nonstop eating plus inconsistent feeding schedule, typically spanning 14 to 15 hours a day, have our internal clocks disaligned, driving dysfunction and impairing the body's ability to store and metabolize energy properly, overworking and stressing systems to the point of disease onset and acceleration. Yeah, 
It doesn't sound great because it ain't. However, there is some good news. Emerging data suggests that consistent meal timing may be a simple and powerful way to get our health back in line and clocks realigned. Nice, but why? Well, it's thought that this consistency entrains our body to know and prepare for food at a certain time each and every day. And in doing this, optimizing its function during digestion and allowing it to rest up, regulating restorative, rejuvenating, detoxifying, and protective pathways when it's off the digestive clock. And there has been both human and animal data to back this, a lot of which we cover with specific deep dives across the Fasting 101 playlist, explaining how consuming all of our energy within a predefined window each and every day without changing anything else like calorie intake can have powerful impacts on our health. Eye opening cellular and metabolic effects. We're talking glucose stabilizing, insulin sensitizing, sirtuin activating, autophagy stimulating, stem cell reawakening, inflammation lowering, fat adapting effects. And many reasons for this point to the circadian aligning hypothesis, which argues that this type of eating aligns with the way that we've evolved to eat, being better equipped to digest and metabolize food during the day, and getting a higher quality, more restorative, efficient sleep as a byproduct. So with that, let's take a look at this new data, reinforcing why meal timing with good alignment matters for longevity too. The study. This new study out of the University of Texas aimed to tease out how circadian aligned meal timing along with a slight caloric restriction impacts longevity in mice, which if you are new here are not in fact humans. Although some humans are rats. Mm-hmm. All right, I stole that joke. Moving on. To dissect the impact of caloric intake, fasting length and feeding time on lifespans, researchers applied five different protocols to groups of genetically identical mice. All groups except one followed a caloric restriction and meal timing schedule. And as you could probably guess, that one group was the control group, which ate at libidum or literally whenever they wanted without a caloric restriction and was the baseline for the study. As for the other four groups, they all ate at a 30% caloric restriction compared to the control, with two of them eating their energy in a 12-hour window, one group at night and one group during the day, while the other two groups ate in a two-hour window, again, one during the day and one at night. This allowed researchers to see how both meal timing and caloric restriction impacted the organisms when they ate with and against their natural circadian rhythms. And for mice, being circadian aligned means that they ate during the night because they're nocturnal. So what happened? Well, first they observed that the 30% caloric restriction was sufficient to extend the lifespan of these four intervention groups by an average of 10% compared to the controls. Nice. But get this, the daily fasting plus circadian alignment acted together to extend lifespan a whopping 35% compared to the controls. Yeah, I know, that's a lot of longevity gabagool. Mm -hmm. All of this, might I add, working independently of body weight. No surprise though, because we already know that's overrated. Now, out of all of the protocols, the two-hour circadian align protocol had the most substantial impact on lifespan, metabolic markers, hormones, and gene expression, but not by much, as the 12-hour circadian align protocol was right there with it, finding that circadian align caloric restriction at night protected against age-related gene changes, lowered inflammation, and improved the metabolic function of key organs such as the liver compared to the controls. But interestingly, the calorie restricted meal timing in a circadian disaligned fashion did not produce similar benefits. All of this led researchers to conclude that caloric restriction plus circadian aligned meal timing can promote longevity and provide an additional perspective to further explore the mechanisms of aging. Now, it's always important to remember again that mice are not in fact humans. And hours fasting in mice do not one-to-one -one translate to hours fasting in humans. But nonetheless, 
This is just another interesting glimpse into why meal timing likely has power, which continues to help solidify why I do it. Speaking of that, my case for early eating. For me, I have been exclusively eating early for the last five years or so, slowly creeping it up until I got it steadily closing in the mid to late afternoon. And to be honest, although intriguing, the data suggesting its potential longevity boosting effects isn't the main reason that I do it. Although it was the reason I first embarked on my dinner rebellion years ago, the real reason that I continue to do it is because it makes me feel much better on a day-to-day -day basis, both subjectively through things like mood, feel, and cognition, but also objectively through things like sleep data, blood work, and recovery stats, all of which we've covered in videos on the channel, which I'll link below. Now I don't eat less, but instead eat high quality real whole foods in a consistent window each and every day. A window for me that currently sits between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And I personally feel that having my body on a consistent meal time and clock entrains it to expect food in a specific window each and every day, thus helps it optimize its overall function, giving the digestive system a much needed break going into the evening and throughout the night. That's clearly displayed itself in the uptick I've seen in overall sleep quality, specifically deep sleep, getting a consistent three plus hours per night, nearly double what the average intelligent walking ape, AKA human gets on a nightly basis, allowing me to optimize things such as my nightly brain clean via the glymphatic system, which is a function of deep sleep that washes away the toxic waste products produced as a byproduct of energy metabolism leaving me waking up refreshed and in a better headspace in the morning. And in addition to all this, there's also a pretty good probability that this meal timing, combined with other strategic habits that we talk about each and every week on this channel, real whole food, moving that badonka donk, prioritizing those Zs in a healthy environment, is delaying disease onset and thus extending health span or those truly healthy years of life, increasing the odds, likelihood, and probability of longevity. I mean, that is all you can do, right? Put your pretty cool meat suit and five pound mushy membrane in a position to operate efficiently and enjoy the moment. And here's a little tip if you're looking to embark on a meal timing protocol yourself. There is no one optimal protocol. The best strategy is always the one that you can sustain. Eating early may not work for you, and that's fine. Do you, boo? Noodle on your goals, baseline yourself, your current eating habits, consider your unique lifestyle variables, and craft your protocol accordingly. It could be a 14-10, a 16-8, a 12-12, focused on early eating, late eating, midday eating. It all depends. And if you need some help, we have a full video walking through building your protocol right here, which will also be linked below. Or you could even join our weekly longevity challenges in Patreon, where we as a team tackle this longevity thing together, implementing longevity focused, sustainable change week by week, habit by habit, focusing on getting healthy from the inside out. If interested, the links for that will also be in the description below. At the end of the day, what is becoming more and more evident with each paper published is the fact that the status quo of consuming energy from the first hour you get up to the last hour before bed is not an ideal strategy for either short-term prosperity or long-term vitality especially when this is combined with the modern ultra-processed Western diet and lifestyle norms. So I urge you to break out of the matrix, question the societal program that you downloaded long ago and never thought twice about. Who knows? Some new software may bring out and unveil aspects of your biological hardware you never knew you had, or rejuvenate a feature that you accidentally erased Years ago, all you may need is a good moment of silence for a reboot. Wait, you mean like the one we just had before?